Recording meetings in progress. Okay, thank you everybody. Welcome to the education, culture and youth services meeting. The time now is 706 and we are starting our recording. And I wanna welcome everybody who is here and everybody who's taken time out of their crazy schedules uh, to be here for this meeting. Uh, I hope that everybody has their agenda or has looked at the agenda uh, so that we will follow in an organized uh, manner. And most of the people in the committee was given an email beforehand. I'll just go over this quickly. Uh, number one, we're going to go to quickly go over the minutes of the November 3rd meeting. Uh, number two, we're going to have Amy Fair, who is the CEC 11 uh, liaison for PS41. She's a parent member and have her speak. Uh, and then third up is uh, Ms. Rojas, who is the principal from the uh, PS41, the Seambridge School. And number five, uh, I should say that's number three. Number four is going uh, after we have our committee at this point, our committee basically is going to be speaking back and forth. Uh, when the committee is done speaking, then we will open it up to the public, which is the gallery session or the public hearing. And then we can start from there. Um, Madam Chair? Excuse me? Madam Chair, can I correct you on that? No, 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 meeting? Robert. You can't correct me right now. Please. The public is allowed to speak at any time in a committee meeting. I'm letting you know that. Okay, Thank well, you. we can dis we can discuss that at another time, but because uh, I have questions for certain people here. And when we're all speaking, we're going to do everything in a and we're going to speak in a in a timely fashion and without people overlapping each other. I want every I want this to be a very the, the conduct to be very good. So if anybody has questions while somebody else is speaking, what I ask is write down your questions so you don't forget them and so that they're not discarded and so they are brought, you know, to the whole committee. Okay. Uh, after the committee goes through, you know, speaks, then we are going to have open it to the public. I'm going to ask first for Joanne Carpenter to speak. And then after that, um, we will have we will hear from everybody else who is in the public. So that's how I want to conduct the meeting this evening. Okay. Um, so I would just uh, the one thing I do want is right now is for everybody who is here, uh, committee first, and then afterwards. Uh, I know this is a little, you know where I'm including the public right now, but uh, it, for people to introduce themselves and uh, just quickly say your name and who you represent or who you are. And I will start. My name is Bernadette Ferrara. I'm the chair of the Education, Culture and Youth Services Committee. I've been a member on Community Board 11 for uh, over 13 years, and I'm the president of the Van Ness Neighborhood Alliance and a longtime resident of Van Ness. Um, anybody who wants to unmute themselves can go next. I'll jump in, Bernadette. Okay, who is that? Phyllis, thank you. It's me. Hi, I'm Phyllis Nastasio. I'm new to the board. Um, I'm also a member of the Morris Park Community Association and the Allenton Avenue Merchants Association, and I'm also on the precinct council, and I'm a teacher in the neighborhood. Thank you, Phyllis. Next, how about you, Natalie? You're part of the committee. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes I um, do. Okay, this is Natalie. I am also a board member for three years, and um, a recent resident of Morris Park. And that's, that's it. Okay, thank you. Uh, anybody else who wants to jump in, I will leave it up to you to jump in and say who you are. Don't be shy. Well, I don't know if I should, but my name's Farah. I'm representing Councilman Mark Joe Knight tonight. Nice to see you all. Thank you, Farah. Uh, next, how about you, Amy? 
Good evening, everyone, and forgive my camera. It's not working on WebEx. Uh, my name is Amy Fair, and I'm your CEC 11 representative. Okay, thank you. Uh, what about you, Charlene? Unmute yourself. Okay. <laughs> So my name is Charlene Jackson Mendez, and I work with Bernadette um, as a part of the Van Ness Neighborhood Alliance. I'm the vice president, and I also am a mom, a wife and mom. I have four children, um, so I've worked hard getting them through the New York City educational system. <laughs> Um, I'm also an educator. I taught for many years um, within the CUNY system, probably a decade, and I just have a general interest. Um, I believe in improving communities, and as a part of that, I know that a quality education is critical. I do believe it's the way that um, you can have freedom and advance in society. Uh, I know that the quality of education overall in the Bronx, sad to say, is poor for many children. So that's why I'm very interested and here this evening. Okay, thank you, Charlene. Uh, Ms. Ms. Rojas, are you on? Yes, I am. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> Okay, perfect. Um, good evening, everyone. I am Ms. Rojas. I am the principal of the Steambridge School 481X. It's located at 1684 White Plains Road. I serve 287 wonderful and amazing babies. And I am happy to have Ms. Carpenter, who I would love for her to introduce herself next. Um, and she is the proud parent of one of my fourth grade babies. <laughs> Very good. Thank you so much. Okay, Ms. Carpenter or Mrs. Carpenter. Hello, everybody. I'm a parent for, for student London Bryan who attends PS 481. I also live on Fillmore Street and have lived here for about 16 years now. And that's okay. it. All right, that's enough. Hopefully you'll come to our meetings. They're right up the block. So fantastic. Um, okay, uh, I also see there's a, a Christy Olson. Would you like to say hello? Introduce yourself. Hi, how are you? I'm Christy Olson. I'm the Associate Director of Youth Services at Neighborhood Initiatives Development Corporation. I have two of my coworkers here as well. Oh, fantastic. Thank you so much, Christy. You're welcome. Uh, uh, and we have uh, Kayla Ruiz. Oh, she's also she, she is also with uh, Christy. Am I correct? Yes, she uh, yes, she ran a program at the the site that we're talking uh, we're speaking about um, this okay. evening. Okay, fantastic. Um, is there anybody else? Uh, how about you, uh, Robert? Robert. Okay, I'm Robert Press. I'm a former member of Community Board Eight and its Education Committee. Uh, past PA president, past District 10 president of the President's Council, officer of the Chancellor's Parent Advisory Council, and currently a member of the uh, Pelham Parkway Neighborhood Association. I'm a board member there, as well as a resident here in Board 11. Thank you. Okay. okay. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Monica Major. I'm Director of Education for the Bronx Board President's Office. Thank oh, you for fantastic. having me. Fantastic. So good to hear your voice. <laughs> I just basically lost our page for a moment, so just bear with me, everybody. Oh. Mm. Today is one of those days, I hate to say it. Okay. All right, I just lost everybody. Okay, one minute. Okay. Bear with me. There we go. Okay. You don't know what was on my screen. I'll tell you. <laughs> it wasn't everybody here. Okay. Um, we also have with us tonight uh, is uh, uh, Yahe. Do you want to introduce yourself to say hello? 
Hello, everybody. Uh, I dialed in a little late. Uh, I only have a few minutes before I go to my next meeting, but uh, um, Vice Chair of Community Board 11, just uh, dialing in. Um, hope everybody's doing well and uh, keep up the good work, Bernadette. Thank you. You too, Yahe. We're all partners in Van Ness, Yahe, Van Ness Neighborhood Alliance. <laughs> Um, okay, and I think the only other person that didn't speak was, uh, was, uh, Tony. Uh, did you want to say hello? Hi, good evening, everybody. My name is Tony Farrell I am another representative of NIDC. I'm the director of elementary programming and I'm okay. a lifetime long resident of the Morris park area. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Okay, we're going to continue with our agenda. We're going to briefly go over our minutes from last uh, last month. Okay, which I could share. Up, you know, I'm going to speak it only because it's very quick. Um, our meeting, uh, our minutes last month. Were, our meeting was November third. Uh, it started at seven fifteen. It ended at eight forty nine. Uh, we had introductions. I feel introductions are very important. Um, hope everybody agrees, or at least is tolerant. Uh, so we did have introductions last week. Uh, one of the things that the uh, education, culture, and youth youth services meeting does is that we uh, facilitate the Yankee Leadership Awards. Uh, this is money that is granted to each community board, and there's criteria. Uh, there are five nominees that are finally selected. They have to be submitted through the organizations within community board 11. Uh, the criteria is the age I think is from 14 to 20. And there, uh, there's other criteria for that, which is, uh. Community work in community board 11, uh, in the schools. And it needs to be uh, documented with references. There is a resume, uh, but uh, each child that does get nominated out of the nominees, five are chosen. And the financial reward is $750 each. And that money does not come with any strings. The child is to use it as they wish. And I'm sure as the parent will guide them to, to do that. Um, but it is a good seed to plant with the leadership. So coming into 2021 uh, and the awards will be uh, usually given out on the mound of the Yankee Stadium uh, in sometime in June or in September of next year. And uh, that's always exciting and they get to stay for the game. I'm sure they get to meet some of the uh, some of the, um, the, the, the guys on the team. <laughs> and it's a, it's a wonderful evening, but it, 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 it does give them goals and show the importance of leadership. So I'm always very thankful that the Yankees continue that each year. So each community board gets this, uh, and with community board 11, we always try to reach out for parents that have children between these ages and, um, to submit them. If you're within Van Ness, you would submit them through Van Ness neighborhood Alliance. If you're in Morris Park, you try to get to Morris Park Community Association and Allerton and so on and so forth in the different associations because the president of that organization has to sign off. Uh, we're not going to speak too much about the Yankee Leadership Wars uh, besides that um, because I, each, each committee member I had sent all of our nominees we will discuss it at another meeting after everybody has had a, ta a chance to read through all of them, and then we can have a discussion. And that will probably be in January. Um, then afterwards, we, uh, with our meeting, we spoke about a possible guest speakers for upcoming meetings. And then in the new business part, we uh, discussed, we had an open discussion between committee members and the public on the mission of the committee. So that is the minutes from November 3rd. And now we're gonna continue on. So I'd like to bring to the floor is uh, Amy Fair, who is the CEC board member. And Amy, I'm gonna give you the microphone. Ma'am, thank you, Ms. Bernadette. Um, good welcome. evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to 
I guess, meet you all through Zoom. I apologize again that you're not able to see my face, but next time I promise you will be able to see me. Um, okay, so, and it's great to see you, Monica, as well. Um, so I am newly elected. This is my first year, so you guys have to bear with me. I'm actually the liaison for the Steam Bridge School. Um, but, but all the schools, I have five uh, locations. I have PS 106 Park Chester School. I have, of course, the Steam Bridge School. I have 498 Van Ness Academy, MS 127, and PS 567, the Castle Hill Campus. Um, why I wanted to become a CEC member was one because um, that's actually how I met Miss Monica and a couple of others. I was one of those parents who just was very inquisitive and wanted to be an advocate for my my daughter. I'm a woman of color. I'm a director at NYU um, at the Steinhardt School for Music. And um, one of the things that I noticed was that um, I was looking at the opportunities of the kids that were in the city compared to in the Bronx. So I'm a Bronx young woman born and raised. And being a single mom and looking at the opportunities available to my daughter and just also just really focusing on, as you know, with the Black Lives Matter issues and the protests about diversity matters when it comes to curriculum, uh, when it comes to equity in the classroom. And I just thought that it would be important for me as her role model to be show her what it's like to contribute and, and collaborate with the DOE to foster change. So that's one of the reasons why I ran for the CEC. Um, it has been successful so far and to meet other parents and constituents like yourself who just really want to foster impact and change. So hopefully I'll be able to work closely with each of you at some point in time. Right now we have over eight members, including myself. I'm also the recording secretary. Um, and I also am the chair of the diversity inclusion and equity subcommittee. Uh, my co-chair is Dawn Guillermo. And um, we, we actually communicated last month our goals um, to the community and what we were looking to do. Um, so our mission is to bring our parent and school communities together. And our goals was to be able to have an open, honest, real conversation on what it means to have a culture of inclusion, um, expanding opportunities to work together with all of our schools, research to better address disparities identified within our schools, and address those issues identified that deter our communities from equally participating in education related matters so that individuals who want to participate can. Um, and the reason why that was so important to me and, and to my co chair was because we're both mothers, even though she's married, I'm the single mom, we realize, and she's an Italian woman and I'm a woman of color, that even though we're different by race, we still are very much alike. And, um, we shared our stories and our struggles with each of our children. And we basically said we wanted to uh, empower other parents to bridge the gap. The reality is, yes, we're all different, but we are very much alike. At the end of the day, there's a common goal amongst all parents is to make our children successful. So it's important that we work together to find a way to work with um, our education leadership partners, right, to be able to do so. And that's gonna be one of our goals and one of my initiatives as long as I am the CC. I'm your representative. So I'm hoping again to be able to partner with schools. My goal is to be able to research um, and get to know all of my schools, spend time with my principals, um, see how I can be of assistance and just kind of hear everyone out and see what the common theme is amongst the schools assigned to me um, to be able to connect you guys together, represent back what I'm going to be able to um, research and do, and of course, to service you in my two year term. So thank you again for this opportunity, Bernadette, to introduce myself. And I promise again, next time around, you will be able to see my face. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. I'm I'm just glad that you're here, and uh, we've had a we've had a chance to get to know somebody who is has a, a full schedule, has a has very very extremely good goals, and uh, I, I only wish you well. I just uh, I want to make sure that we all partner together. Um, with, you know, the Venice community with CEC 11 and all the other schools that uh, we have in our area and, uh, you know, build, build bridges and move forward in a, in a positive fashion and uh, to resolve things. We all want to just, uh, we, we all care about our children. It's quite obvious. So, um, you know, myself. Uh, my my son at this point is uh, 27 years old, but I was a you know I'm a single mom. Doesn't matter. We're all single moms at some point, or you know 
or we're married or whatever. It doesn't matter what the age is. So it's, um, you know, our education and what's taught to our children uh, is, is, is a priority. It's our future and it's good seeds we have to plant. So I, uh, Amy, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm glad, you know, glad you're on our team. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'd like to give the floor now to principal, uh, principal Rojas. Uh, so please unmute yourself and say hello. And I, can you just say your first name correctly? Cause I know I always say it, say it incorrectly. <laughs> I do. I, and I apologize. No, that's that's totally um, fine. My first name is Katiria. Katiria. Ah, oh, that's good. Yes. So, <laughs> so um, hi, Amy. It's nice to hear from you again. Um, it was a pleasure meeting you last week during our D11 meet and greet. So it was a pleasure to see your face and and hear you this evening again. Um, so once again, good evening, everyone. The purpose for me speaking this evening is to advocate for my parents as it relates to free aftercare for my school. When I first took over the school February 1st, 2016, when I assumed the role of principal, I worked assiduously to obtain a free aftercare for the community. In the past, I've contacted um, and met with several individuals, but unsuccessfully to gain the allocation that we would need to provide my babies with this service. Um, in addition, I've taken several initiatives to reach out to some of my neighboring colleagues that have grown up in the neighborhood, whose school have been in the neighborhood for quite some time, um, to inquire about how can I obtain free aftercare. However, Unfortunately, I was informed numerous times that due to the capacity of my school, we only go up to about 300 and something students. Presently, we are 287. We do not qualify for a free aftercare program. Yes, presently, we do have an after school program. It's ultimate enrichment. However, my parents have to pay $280 a month. Ultimate enrichment and does have um, a voucher program for parents that qualify. However, many of my parents do not qualify um, for that voucher program. Currently, I have spoken to Ultimate Enrichment about trying to obtain a grant just before the pandemic. Um, they found a grant. As soon as the pandemic hit, the grant was pulled. Um, and we were not able to fulfill um, the requirements for the grant. So many of my parents have continued to struggle, like many people um, today, economically, due to the matriarchal and single household dynamics. I totally understand. Um, I was raised by a single mom. So I humbly ask that if anyone is aware of contacts or links that really relate to possible grants that can assist my parents in alleviating this existing issue, um, please let me know. Please do not hesitate to contact me. K Rojas, that's K-R-O-J-A-S three at schools with an S at the end dot NYC dot gov. Um, my school community will continue to look ultimate enrichment and um, Miss Carpenter. She has been a big advocate, especially this year um, about making sure that we obtain um, this free aftercare. So I really want to thank her this evening because um, she comes and she rushed. She rushed right home um, this evening. So thank you, Miss Carpenter. Um, and joining myself and everyone else in this fight to advocate for the free aftercare. Okay, thank you. Uh, would you be able to put your contact information and email in the chat, please? Mr. Uh, sure will. And I do apologize for my camera being off. I'm actually in transit because I, I travel far. I live far from where I work and I, I left work like about 630. So my apologies and I'll, I will do that Bernadette. Thank you. No problem. You're, you're coming in loud and clear and that's the most important at this point. <laughs> um, I, I just would, uh, I, I just would like to know if, uh, if everybody has, uh, 
excuse me, we're going to go on now and open this up to the gallery session because I do want to hear from the parents and I do want to hear from the others that are here and that have questions. Okay, so I am opening it up and uh, Joanne Carpenter, I'd like you to have the microphone and to speak. And um, if you want to read your letter or parts of your letter, et cetera, I think everybody has had a chance to read it. I leave that up to you. No, I don't. How are you? Hi, hi everybody. My name is Joanne Carpenter. Again, I'm a parent of London Bryant who attends the Steenbridge School. I met Bernadette um, last month at a fair that they were having in Van Ness Park. And I was talking to her about all of the channels that I was going through, going through trying to obtain free after school services. I reached out to the superintendent. I reached out to several different other community boards, and then they directed me to speak with community board 11. And so I'm just hoping that the ball doesn't get dropped when it comes to us, because like Ms. Rojas said, we are such a small school, but we have so many struggling single parents, such as myself, who cannot afford $300 a month for aftercare. Uh, it's just impossible, especially paying $1,800 rent in the neighborhood. It's a, I just hope that the ball doesn't get dropped and that either we can get a grant funding or some type of free after school program within the school for parents like myself and many other parents that are in the same situation as myself. No, I, I can understand that. I, I really do. Um, uh, uh, Farrah, I just, you know, I, I'd like you to jump in and maybe and and just speak a little bit about uh, what I know Councilman Joe Nye, as of December 31st, will uh, no longer be the councilman, but what, he, you know, what he, was, okay. what he was able to do. Whoever the council person is, you should always reach out. Uh, every January, our office takes it upon themselves. We don't wait for people to ask us. We, I personally reached out to every school in January in our district. I've done that for the last three years. Our budget director has done that for the last three years, imploring our schools to reach out and apply for funding. It's money you're leaving on the table. You, the principal does have to do this. It's done through the school. Um, you can ask for capital funding for improvements at the school. You can ask for after school programming and work with our budget director to see how to do it. Um, unfortunately, we've been trying to reach out to your school. Um, I spoke to the councilman today. He's very disheartened because he's been trying to reach out to you guys. He wants to help, but there has to be better communication and, and outreach. Um, we try to make it as easy as possible, but you do have to reach out to us and we can explain how to apply for certain fundings. Um, I did also notice you mentioned something about air conditioning. Uh, the mayor's office mandated this year that all schools will be getting air conditioning in their schools. So I don't know if that's still a situation there that you're waiting for. Um, I can follow up with the, with the um, office to see if that's scheduled or how you can go about getting that as well. But as far as after school programming programs, capital funding, technology funding, please reach out to um, Council District 13, which is the school that your district that you're in. Um, right now, your councilman is Mark Joni, and I'm his representative, Farah Rubin. I'll leave my uh, email and number in the chat. And in January, the number will still be the same. So, um, but I implore you to reach out and our budget director has been very good about talking you through the process and how to apply for funding. So I highly encourage that. I know well, the woman has, has, to has to reach out programs. I'm so sorry. The principal question. has to reach out or the parents can reach out. I think it has to be done through the school has to apply for the funding. It's done through the school. Okay. So, yeah. In January. Okay. Yep. That's in January, but you can reach out before because I know my budget director who is away this week. I wanted him to be here tonight. Um, he'll be back and is always willing to talk to you on the process. Okay, great. Um, Ms. Ferreira, so I just, I'm very curious about how they've tried to reach out to me. I did receive um, funding for technology in the past. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I have reached out. I do have email on that. Um, regarding air condition and after school programs. 
I've never received. So I'm just curious as to how they've been trying to reach out to me because I leave my building every night around after six. And what? so I don't have, I do, I do have um, some capital funding in terms of the technology. We were given a grant for right. buying technology and this was about three years ago. And regarding their air condition, the school is not a Department of Education building. I see. Um, and, and so when I did reach out to the office before and I got the petition, I even reached out to Ruben Diaz with those. They sent someone to my school to do a survey and it was over $400,000. And they stated that we would have to pay for it to try to get a grant so that we can pay for it. So I have, you know, done my work on my channel's ends, but it, I've always hit a wall, but I will continue. I will reach out to you guys tomorrow and, and find Specific out. Specific talking I... about Councilman Jonai's office, not the borough president's office, because he will, or, you know, he does give funding for these things. So, um, and I don't, I do know, I just spoke to him that I don't know if we have the wrong number or address for you, but he's tried to reach out several times and was unsuccessful. So, yes, please. And you can send me whatever email you sent us. I'm going to, Again, put my information. I would love to see what you were asking about and work with you. Um, so definitely, so thank you very much. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll definitely reach out to him. I'll call personally oh, great. Um, tomorrow and send an email. But you know, the email has been the same, and I could even forward some emails from the past. But thank you yeah. so much, Ms. Barrera, and I will um, I will reach out definitely tomorrow. I appreciate that. Great. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, do you want to put your phone number that your work phone number in the chat for them so yeah. that they can yes that's a great idea thank you miss carpenter fantastic um okay i i know uh the one thing i i as far as with the air I'm, i guess i'm putting this out there i'm reading your your email uh joanne uh about I know that there was an issue with the air. I think in each one of the rooms, if I'm correct, and that there is air conditioning because it's climate controlled in the actual classrooms. But the problem, I guess the large question is the air conditioning um, or the climate control in such a large place as a gym. So I know that that is that is a big issue. I just so you know, when that school was St. Dominic's, I was there from kindergarten until eighth grade. So that was my second home. I know every part of that building <laughs> from top to bottom. And I do know years ago, the only air conditioning we had was large industry um, fans. So that was it. So I, I would think that would be a huge undertaking and that would be such a plus for the school and for, you know, uh, the constant use of that of the gym. So, uh, let's, let's keep pushing forward for that because I'm sure other gyms are equipped with it. Uh, it's just a matter of getting, uh, getting this particular gym to, to get the money for this gym. So, um, I, I'm sure it's not recreating, uh, recreating the wheel. So it's a matter of going through the right channels. Um, Bernadette, can I ask on just one one more question sure. um, before you move on? Um, and so, who would I contact? I know that um, a CEC representative many years ago. I would say the pandemic. This is two years. I would say about three, four years ago. They did a walkthrough of the building with me, and we went outside in the back. And we've been having this issue with um, the house. You know, there's a house in in the yard. Yes, I know there's that house. house that yeah, and um, it has caught it has a lot of rodents because there are a lot of trash in the backyard and it's filling up and even outside and it's gotten to the point where because my kids come through the back and it's it's becoming to the point where there are huge rodents. Um, and when I did walk walk around with one of the CC members, you know, she you know suggested taking pictures and. But who do I contact regarding this? Because I know it's his property, but it there, there is two, affecting it. There are two. Mm -hmm. There are two properties there, so it's the house. Well, you have the house that's next door. I know that's not the issue, but yes, you have no. the other the two houses that are on Hunt, Hunt Avenue, 
And the one house that's there is not the issue. It's the other property that is the issue. And we myself, because one of our members lives across the street. So mm -hmm. we have already made uh, 911 calls and 311 calls. I would say this summer and last summer, um, because it is a public health issue. Okay. Yes. When, it, when it comes to rodents, it's mm -hmm. a public health issue. Yes. We do understand that there has been other rat infest infestations within the community. Okay, mm -hmm. within within the Van Ness area and within community board 11. What we have noticed is that the inspectors come, but because unfortunately of COVID, there has been such a pause and a hold on stuff. And I don't understand why, because this is a 911 issue. Yes. So, I mean, I, I have a folder full of 311 calls for over the years and rat infestations you're supposed to get because it is an emergency. I, yes. I, I would continue um, making 911 calls because you have children involved. Mm -hmm. um, and I also would also uh, bring that to the community board uh, public health, public health committee to actually get them to put it on their agenda, which is not an issue because you, you know, a school is an issue where you have children and, and this should not be, there, there shouldn't be a delay. That's my point. Yes, I totally agree. Um, right now I have my, um, my PA president. He is, um, you know, signing petitions from parents um, to help alleviate or try to get this resolved as as quickly as possible inside the building. They're safe, but yes, them standing coming into the building where they have to line up outside, especially you know with the three feet distancing. It's 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 really very frightened. They're very frightened. The little kids. So thank well, you so much. And then so also, Principal, may I jump in? Um, yes. Sorry. Um, so, so Principal Rojas, I just wanted to go back to a few things. Uh, clearly, what you've heard so far from um, uh, Assembly Member, uh, Council Member Joe I's office is correct um, about the funding. His office does handle um, uh, your your. They would definitely handle, be able to handle the um, after school programming, and and also on the borough president side, we do just capital. So, when thinking in, about the um, air conditioners, you should definitely. Uh, uh, that's one way to get every, get what you need by splitting up the different ask uh, to the ball president and one to the council member um, uh, Joe Nye's office. Um, so I just wanted to assure you that everything you heard so far is correct, and that um, also what's really important is that you do have to initiate the process. So every request does have to come from you directly, and it, and of course you don't share a building, so it's just it, your request. And that filing period is now. So for the ball president's office, you have until uh, January 15th to submit a, a request for, for funding. But, um, you know, as soon as you get it in and get it over with, it, it's better. Um, but I wanted to make sure that you knew that about the, the difference in the ball president's office. And because we would never be able to fund an after school program because that's a pro it's a program. We only do capital funding. Can I and on the, and one more thing, the issue of the um, rats and so forth. You should send me an email uh, with the school. It is best if you could, you know, you don't have to take pictures of rodents, but if you can show the conditions of where you think the holes are, if you can take pictures and send it to us, then I will move that to our um, our operations director and she'll, you know, contact the Department of Sanitation for you. Thank you so much, Monica. I would also do. like to give you some more information, if I may. Yes, Christy, go ahead. How are you? Um, hi, Ms. Rojas. Um, you recently there was OCFS had out um, a stabilization grant where you guys could have been covered for two years. Anyone who had a SAC license from your after school could have went for that, and they weren't turning anybody down. I know I was. We were able to get three back to back to back, and that would have alleviated some of your payments, if not totally taken them away for a whole year. That's one. So that all. What did you say the program was called again? So I can write it down. Closed down already. You had you had from August until November to apply. It is called the stabilization grant through Office of Family and Children's Services. It was coming from the state. And there was a 21st century grant that had its 
submissions yesterday and your school was on that list. So you guys could have went for that too. That won't be coming out and the answers won't be coming out to who's getting that as of, I think June or March. And then that for your next year, that could have been a possibility to either A, lower the amounts of funding that your parents are coming out of pocket or B, mm -hmm. been able to subsidize the whole program. But as for that um, stabilization grant, that was, it was literally free money. They were giving it to anybody who had a, a SAC license. So the stabilization grant, it's finished. It's and finished then the and so is the OCF and so is the 21st century. So if Wait, your provider has a grant writer, they really should be looking at these things for you. Um, foundation money, um, state, city. I know DYCD is probably coming out with a grant um, probably within the next year or so because a lot of those contracts are coming up as well. And okay. then most of, the most of the political parties do provide money towards discretionary funds to cover a lot of these after school programs. Is there is there a website or a link that I can find all these grants that you're referring to? Because every day I receive over 100 emails. So it's really hard for me to go through 100 and something email if it's being forwarded to me. But is there a particular website or link that I can go and search when I'm not in a meeting or in a classroom so that I can find all these grants that that you're you're mentioning. To be honest to, with you, your CBO is supposed to be doing that legwork. They should be providing that information and have a grant writer because that's the in conjunction with your school and the CBO of managing that linkage agreement. So if your CBO is providing these services for your parents for two hundred and eighty dollars, and I mean it's mm -hmm. not a horrible price. It's running from after school. Some people are, are running after schools at 300 and 350, which is the going rate right now, unfortunately. But wow. um, you really need to talk to your provider and be like, do you have a grant writer? Are you looking to offset these funds? Because mm -hmm. they get the, most of that information. A lot of our after school programming, which NIDC has, has a grant writer. And they try to provide and help you look for you know, somebody to offset that to the community because your community is obviously in need and screaming. So yes, definitely. Okay. okay. So I'll speak with them. I, I'll speak with them. Um, again, as I said, they did have a grant that they applied for just before the pandemic, and it all of they they it everything went through, but then it was pulled. So I'm definitely gonna speak with them again and then have them. Is there a website or, or they would know the website that they can go to Christy or they, they would have could. all that. Information. Honestly, it's OCFS or you look okay. for Department of Youth and Community Development and that's a city agency and okay. they should have a foundation grant um, account. Any nonprofit really is, it, especially if they're trying to help the community, they really should be exposed to most of this and most CBOs are, that's the majority that I know. Okay, perfect. Uh, could, All right. could I ask you, uh, Christy, uh, CBO, what mm -hmm. does that stand for? Community-based organization like Neighborhood Initiatives Development Corporation or NIDC. Um, originally, before Ms. Rojas came, we ran the after-school program there. Um, so okay. we were charging a fee as well. But um, I don't know, we weren't asked to come back. But that was a while ago. I think it was in 16. That was and in a very long time ago, but like the schools that we brought up during that time are just getting funding now. So can you put, she, can you put your contact information? I can. Uh, no problem. Christy, it takes that long. If they if if from sixteen to now, it, it takes that long for, well, for them. Miss Rojas, what happened was you have to remember your school in four eighty three and PS three fifty seven came in at a time where they were basically annexes. And they were yeah. offsetting from the other schools. And you guys were only doing one grade at a time. Now you're a yeah. full functioning school with a report card and your staff yeah. could be utilized to go get funding. So okay. prior to that, you guys had no information. You were a Catholic school before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now, yeah. now what we're seeing is, is after the pandemic, there was a whole bunch of money to get given to certain programs to go and grab. And basically it was just free. Yeah, 483 just received a grant, um, but they, it wouldn't apply till, and I was explaining to Ms. Carpenter, because I reached out to her to find out like oh, how, 
how was hers going? And she's like, we just finally got one this year, but it doesn't apply for next year. So you're absolutely right. Okay. Ms. Kayofi, yeah, Ms. Kayofi, um, she does have some money and it's helping and there'll probably be a discount in what her parents are paying come January. But mm -hmm. you have to understand that could offset all of your staff, your after school programs. Ms. Kayofi okay. has a bigger program. And Ms. Who? Ms. Kayofi from 483. Maria? Maria? Oh, Maria Chaffee. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. So okay. we know we know how hard it is. Trust me. Just yeah. you gotta really form that bond with your CBO and make sure that they're going for whatever they can. All right. I thank you so much for all that information. Um, if you can just put some of your information in here so I can write it down, it'll be greatly appreciated. No worries. Do you need her to put in who your CBO is as well, or do you know that information? My CBO is Ultimate Enrichment. That's okay. CBO. Yeah, that's the after school program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't. Okay, so you guys can right. pass this on to them. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. I, I just I just want you to know, um, NIDC, which is the Neighborhood Initiative Development Corp. Um, the person that works with Christy is Hazel Mura, and she has been our honorary trustee since. Badass Neighborhood Alliance has been formed in two, in January 2010, and um, NIDC has been an asset to helping Badass Neighborhood Alliance with any kind of guidance, any kind of questions. Uh, you know, they they have been there for so many things, and they're still there. So uh, they they do help the schools, and um, I, you know, I I'm not a CBO and I'm not uh, a principal, et cetera. And I understand that grant writing is uh, extremely intense and it's a talent. But um, if there's any assistance that you need, Ms. Rojas, with any of this, uh, please reach out to the reach out to the people that are offering the information uh, to to help with the grant writing. If your CBO is not working with you or not um, putting you in the direction uh you know and in the meantime i i get uh, you know other grants etc uh that could work to help the the parents and also uh other other community other community uh outreaches to help not just the parents but the whole community it, it you know let's let's work together with this so um i do really hope that that this basically opens up a plethora of of things to solve a lot of issues. Um, there's just, you know, we, we, we need PS 483 to come to maturity <laughs> for, for the children and for the parents, uh, and for the community. So we're there also, if you ever need us, you, you have, you have my phone number, you have, uh, you know, um, our email address, et cetera. And, you know, reach out, just say, hey, let's just have a meeting. Let's talk about stuff or whatever. Um, you know, most of the time what I, I'm available. So please, you know, we, 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 we love PS 43. <laughs> it's our, it's our little jewel in the middle of Van Nest. So we're here for you. Um, so um, I just, is, is, is there any other any other information that that could be put here that could be be an assistance? I don't know uh, with Monica or Kayla or Christy. Uh, if there's anybody else that has any other questions, etc., with regards to um, how we are going to get the air conditioning, how we're going to get the the you know the the youth programs and everything else. Because I really want us to move forward and to and to help the parents because financially, it's really tough out there. So well, um, I'm, I'm gonna definitely um, do like what Monica suggested because she broke it down in terms of the the borough president versus the council, um, and they can't do both. So I'm gonna reach out to to Monica to find a little more information about um, for the air condition. And then I'll I'll call um, Ferreira and reach out to her regarding the um, 
the after school program. And then um, Christy, I'll reach out to Christy to find out exactly some more information on, on the grants. Um, but before I do that with Christy, I'll just talk with Ultimate Enrichment to find out, you know, do they have any knowledge of some of these um, grants that's out there? Right. It's free money. Whatever free money is out there for PS41. On it, <laughs> <laughs> free money. You've got to grab it. Be first in line. <laughs> yeah, we definitely, we definitely need it and want it. And then, um, with the three one one calls, we'll continue doing what we have on our end. Um, I will do. Start. I will do on my end because I'm always. Yeah, uh, I mean, over this last summer, just so that you know, uh, we got that hole in the fence taken care of in the back, because. Uh, I went there to take pictures and my, uh, 1 of our members said, you know, burn. There's a hole in the fence over there, you know, on hunt Avenue where the cars come in. And she took a picture of it also. And, uh, we, we did get that fixed because I reached out to father Robert and. You know, said, is this your responsibility or the school's responsibility? And he was on it. Yeah, that that. That was that was some that was some years ago, yeah. And um, no, they kept, that's what this summer they kept, this, they kept this breaking the fence. Oh, they they broke it this summer. Yes, yes. Again, oh, I, I wasn't aware that the fence. I know, I know. When I first came there, you you came and we walked the back, and every yes. month it was broken, and they fixed it and fixed it. Okay. Yeah, it's just um, the kids that the kids that have nothing to do because we don't have a community center. The idle hands of the devil's workshop. So summertime comes and hey, let's break the chain the chain link fence and go and hang out and drink and do whatever we other do on the on the kids, you know, the kids uh, jungle gyms or whatever. So uh, it's you know, and, and thank God we have a member that's right there, and so she's on the horn all the time saying, "Burn, you know, I'm going to do my nine one one. There's somebody there," and um, I you know, call to the 49 precinct and we get the ball rolling that way. So we are watchdogs and okay. um, are always constantly uh, making sure that uh, there's no, sh you know, there's no shenanigans going on. It's, it's kind of tough, but as far as with the rat infestation, that is definitely something that has been ongoing and um, that that needs to be taken care of. Uh, the other thing about the rat infestation is that we could also talk to the Department of Buildings uh, and get to the property owner and basically see what's going on on that end too. So um, mm -hmm. I'm going to report back to Community Board 11 and speak with Jeremy and see what's the best way that we can, uh, the most efficient way that we can, uh, um, we can move forward with this. So you should uh, absolutely reach out to Department of Health. Oh first yes, and foremost, yeah. But I was also working with another rat infestation on White Plains Road, uh, the end of last summer, the beginning of last summer, uh, and I have to tell you, Farah, they 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 came, they helped out a little bit, they did not solve the issue, and this is a homeowner. Uh, it, it was pretty, it was pretty disheartening the um, uh, the attention. That yeah. Was, I, I mean, I don't know how to light the fire. Well, that's <laughs> I guess that's the problem. Um, I just want to ask Ms. Rojas, do you have the contact information for Ms. Major? Because I know you said you were going to um, reach out to her after speaking with UE. Yeah, so she she said she works at the um, Borough President Office, so I'm going to get you get contact her through that that way. I can give you my email. Like it's uh, M Major at can, Bronx can you, BP. Can you put it in the chat, Monica, so we could all have it? Okay, great. I want to thank everyone. I really appreciate um, you guys listening to me and Ms. Carpenter. Ms. Carpenter, you know, she's really, she's really been a, a champion, uh, especially this year, because we know it's been really, really hard. Um, and the last two years, you know, everybody had to kind of step back. Uh, um, you know, certain things we couldn't really push for in the last two years. So, you know, I really want to thank everyone and Ms. Carpenter. Because I know it is a struggle struggle for her and, you know, she's the voice of a lot of the parents. So thank you. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody. <laughs> but no, I, that's okay though. <laughs> say, it, say it again. Katiria. 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 Yeah, I'm an Katiria. Italian. I can roll yeah. my R's. <laughs> ah, okay. Katiria. <laughs> All right. 
<laughs> Very good. Thank I, you. I, I just wanted to chime in real quick. Uh, I'm going to, you know, for, I'm going to say Principal Rojas. I'm old school. Um, I'm going to definitely connect with you again. Um, I know I had sent you an email before, but um, I know you said you had worked with another CEC person. I'm new, um, but I'm definitely serious about my role and I want to also be able to contribute towards this. So I will send a follow up email to you. Um, cause I was already looking to plan to do walkthroughs at all the schools and I've already connected and met with 2 schools already via zoom, uh, to start as the 1st phase that I wanted to follow up and do a physical walkthrough. So, I do have a plan of action to come visit your school um, where we can set up a time that works for both of us. And I do also want to, that's very concerning to hear um, the environment that the students are under and very disheartening to the fact that it hasn't been resolved right now. So, Bernadette yes. and everybody on this line, Farrah and everybody, um, you know, definitely for sure, uh, Monica, Christy, I definitely will work i actually got my i'm getting my back my master's guys in the spring and my degree is going to be in grant writing not that i'm saying i'm ah. writing grants but what i will say <laughs> but what i can say is i can contribute to the vision so let's figure out how we can make this work and and, and even thinking about you as a parent talking about the voucher you're right joanne a lot of parents have lost their jobs um, and you're right, there needs to be some kind of support to subsidize that, right? Because the reality is we want to keep our kids safe. Um, and, they, and, they, and we do need to be able to provide that. So the one thing I also heard was a common thing that was concerning for you, Principal Rojas. It doesn't seem like schools are cross-sharing information and resources, which is interesting to me to hear. So what I'm going to do, and I mentioned this to Bernadette before when we spoke offline, just to be transparent with all of you, is that separate from our CEC uh, mandated meetings that we have to do. My goal is to also get my groups of schools together um, so we can talk, so I can just like hear everyone. And I think also allow you guys to cross share information because listening to what Christy said, there's all these resources that other schools are aware of and you're not aware of it. To me, that's also a problem. So we need to fix that and connect the dots, okay? So I'll try my best to also talk to superintendent about that and see how we can get that rolling. Sounds awesome. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Yes. Try uh, try to get a meeting set up with Amy very soon before Christmas before Christmas hits everybody, and then we're all, you know, just dealing with our families, which is what we should be doing. So, but uh, see if that could happen maybe before December twenty fourth. So that would be great. Um, and I there there was another another thing I wanted to bring up, but. Um, uh, I know that uh, within our CEC area, within our community board 11, we also have the Van Nest Academy. So, Amy, I will talk to you offline about that. Uh, and, uh, you know, because those are the schools that are very important to our Van, Van Ness neighborhood. So, um, I, I do, we, we, one of the things that myself and Charlene and the rest of the executive board had talked about is sort of having a round table with a lot of the principals, uh, just to, uh, discuss to, to discuss where everybody is at, or if we can't do that, then doing it 1 on 1, uh, because the schools are very important. And like I said, they're very important to our future and they're important to the community. So we'll see where this takes us. So. I appreciate everybody's opportunity, uh, everybody's help in this situation, because I will tell you grant writing and, and I do know this because it's something that we have discussed at Van Ness Neighborhood Alliance that grant writing um, is very important to move forward with a lot of the things that uh, a lot of the goals we need to achieve. Uh, I'm just wondering how, and I'm throwing this out there, if anybody has any ideas how Van Ness, Forest Park, and Pelham Parkway within three communities, how we can get a community center going, I am all ears. So everybody's got my email, so I put it out there, and it's something that will help the families. Uh, it was something that will help three communities if we get, and there's actually real estate out there right now that could accommodate it and that doesn't always happen. So uh, pray on it and let's see what we could do to help our community and help our children. I just want you to know within the last five decades, 
we have not, and I'm not saying just Van Ness, but Van Ness, Pelham Parkway, and Morris Park, we have not had a community center, and our children have been underserved. So uh, before I leave this earth, that's one thing that I'm going to make sure that we have. <laughs> so anybody else who wants to join the uh, join the uh, crusade, please uh, make sure you connect with me or Charlene. Come to the meetings and we can discuss it. So um, I'd like to put this out there. Is there any uh, Joanne? Are there any other parents that uh, that are here this evening that might want to say something? Um, actually, no, because I sent them the link, but I thought it was through Zoom. I didn't know it was through this um, WebEx. WebEx. And this, yeah, so I don't think they're going to be joining because I told them it was on Zoom. Uh, okay. Well, if you sent them the agenda, the click would actually send you to WebEx. But, and then you have to download the app. So, um, anyway, but that's okay. I hope, uh, I'm so glad that we had met at our our. our our uh, fall festival, uh, and we had we had a lot to discuss about stuff. And I'm so glad that you finally found at least the right road, and the right partners to work with. So um, we look forward we look forward to that. Uh, and just so that everybody who has children, I hope you know that on this on this Sunday coming up, December fifth, right over we got right over on Venice and Unionport Road. By the big white cross, we're going to have our 8th Christmas tree lighting. And it's going to be a mixture of uh, a Christmas Christmas tree lighting. It will be Christmas caroling, hot chocolate, cocos, and Santa's going to come and visit. And we have a lot of toys to give out to whoever comes with their children. And it's something to bring the community together. And it's not just for Van Ness, it's for everybody. So please. Joanne, get the word out to people. Um, I've blasted it out to so many people, so and everywhere, and I will be doing it again on Friday. So uh, we really like to have. Um, this is something that we really enjoy doing. So um, I sent out a flyer that you forward, um, Bernadette. So yes. the, the parents are aware of that because you sent the flyer. So thank you for that. Oh, fantastic! I'm so happy. Put it in their backpacks every day. <laughs> um, thank you. Yeah, and it's it's a lot of fun and um, it's something that we enjoy doing also. So, uh, and um, yeah, so I'd like to open, I'm sorry that I am long winded, uh, but and I apologize and I'd like to put the floor out if there's anybody else, if anybody else would like to jump in and say something, feel free. Are we in the gallery section now or yes. no? Okay, because you had mentioned just like writing down questions. Yes, and I just want to open by by you know saying I'm really horrified about the rat infestation because that's unacceptable period for yes. anybody's child to have to be in that environment. And I think listening to the conversation here, um, it's clear that there needs to be more communication um, between we are a CBO. Bernadette, a community based organization. And so, just as when we had the fall festival, I, I will never forget the young man. He must have been nine, 10. And he just so, in, in the way only children can, said, Oh, this is so nice. You know, he just felt in what he said, you could see that he felt like loved. And that's what we need for our children, children that are well loved and cared for, not just by their parents, but within their community, learn respect and learn to love others. And the fact that we are right here in the Van Ness community willing to work and willing to help. And we didn't know in our own elementary school that there is a rat infestation is outrageous. Actually, uh, uh, there I didn't know that, and I would have been the first one to write a memorandum to Mark, to the Department of Health, to Oswaldo Feliz. This is what our public officials are there to do. Um, yes. so I just want to say that I'm glad that we are coming together 
I, if you all have PTA meetings, um, Joanne, we will try to get at least one member of the Van Ness Neighborhood Alliance to be at that PTA meeting. So we are aware directly from parents what their needs are because accountability is extremely important. I have heard the concerns brought here and if the same thing better not be said the next time. That's all I can say. Uh, we will be working really. I really encourage you Joanne to come to our meetings to invite any parents and if you let me know when that PTA meeting is coming. Um, one of us will get there. Because that's what it's all about and I think it's so important when children see the adults in their lives working for their um, betterment. So I just quickly wanted to ask, I heard the term free aftercare. And so I'm, I'm very familiar with after school programming, but I've never heard the term aftercare um, with regard to a school. So I'm hoping that somebody will define that for me or tell me what that is and how it may differ from after school. I think so, that was Christy. Christy Olson had brought that up. No, and also it's the same thing, I think though. I said it mentioned it several times. It's the it's same, same thing. thing. After school and after know. care is pretty much the same thing. Correct. Yeah. yeah. The one thing I will say, because I my daughter used ultimate enrichment and principal Rojas, I don't know, you could tell me or uh Miss Carpenter. They don't do homework help per se. Like they have, you know, Madison was with them, my daughter, 13 years old. She was with them for maybe five years or so. And they pretty much just, you know, watch your kids. But they would do a winter recital. I don't know if they still do that, Miss Carpenter or, or Principal Rojas. Back in the day before COVID, they would do like a, a musical or an event or something like that. But there is a distinct difference, and that's a good question to ask for you, Joanne, because do you, are you looking just for someone to assist in coverage of the child, or do, would you also want homework help? Because that does make a difference in your ask. They actually have revamped the program because we've complained. I personally have complained so much over the last four years about the homework issue. So now that's the first thing that they do. The first 45 minutes of the program is dedicated to homework. Mm -hmm. And then they go into either music or dance or arts and crafts. Got it. The thing with us is that they continue to raise the price each year, but they're lowering the time of pickup. So if you don't pick your kids up by 550, you start to get charged $10 right. for being late every couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. And people don't get off of work like myself until 6, 630. It's hard to try to get in the cab and pay $30 in a taxi to rush and pick up my children mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so just for your own knowledge too, Miss Mendez, that didn't change. Like Madison hasn't been there in probably the three years, and she's right. The, the even that fee was there, that fee structure, and they typically did end around four or five o'clock at MS one ninety four. So they don't. I don't think they really go over five o'clock anymore, do they, Joanne? Yeah. At all? Yeah, but they do. Before the pandemic, they allowed us to pick up at six o'clock and they would even give a little grace period. But now the pickup is 550. And also they always want us to pay a month in advance, uh -huh. a month in advance. So when September comes around, we're paying for September and October. Plus we're doing school supplies. Plus we not only do school supplies for our children, we have to buy school supplies for the teachers. We're buying the markers, uh -huh. pens printer paper so it's a lot on the parents over and the registration fee still correct yes you, yes there's a registration yes there's a registration fee as well mm -hmm. joanne you know one of the things that i wanted to ask you and i think miss fair kind of anticipated what i was going to ask you is that what are you really seeking in terms of an after school program so i suppose whenever you have that pta meeting if I have enough notice, I want to get there. And those are some of the things that I want to know, because we have so many. Um, and it sounds like you have many parents that really want to do better for their children. And we have exceptionally talented 
and committed people right within that nest. It's just a matter of communicating your needs and then we we can identify what the priorities are and how to be of help. So I'm not gonna let this rat infestation, that is unacceptable. And I'm gonna tell you, I don't have school kids. And you know, my kids are finally my last graduated from high school a year earlier because of COVID. I don't have a little one except for my grandson in school, but I will not rest until that is done because no child living within my community is going to have that. And I'm making you that promise. I wish I had known. I did not know because I would have been like a dog with a bone with this. That's not acceptable. And when your children see that and they fear that and they don't even have basic hygiene within their school, how can they feel respected and good about themselves? That's not acceptable. So we, we're just going to take that ball and run with it. Yeah, I just basically, Chicky, uh, Charlene, Chicky uh -huh. lives on Hunt yeah. Avenue. And mm -hmm. she lives right across the street from the property in question. And she was the one who had said to me, she has burned. Yeah. She goes, I, I really think that there's an issue because I see them coming out, not because she's not in the schoolyard, but she mm -hmm. sees them coming out. And I was like, oh my God, I said, that is, she says, I see the bait boxes, but they're still there. And I said, I, I don't understand why this is happening. But I, uh, I think it is not only uh, a health issue, but it's also, um, if I'm correct, I, I think I might know the property owner and I'll have to do my homework and make a few phone calls to see if I'm correct. Because okay. um, while making a depart, uh, a 911 to the Department of Buildings. Well, we can do all of that, but yeah. what's gonna happen is that once I understand what the problem is, I'm going to start writing and there will be formal memorandums to each and every person that has some responsibility for this because this is not acceptable. I agree. It is the responsibility of the city to maintain a hygienic school environment. Yes. Ms. Mendez, if you could if you could come to the school one day and and take a walk in the back of the building cuz that's where the issue is. It's not in the school inside the school. Right. Is beautiful, right. Clean. But the whole fact of kids and parents coming in the yard and leaving. So at any time, you don't have to make an appointment. I, whatever I'm doing, I'll stop and walk to the back with you. So you can literally see the backyard of this gentleman's property. And even outside, he has a truck that does not move. And it's just infested mm -hmm. with garbage oh, in is the that, truck. Is that the truck that's sitting there that you can't see out the front window? Exactly. Yep. Because oh, I just saw that. Yeah, it's it, filled with he, it's filled with garbage. That's his. Oh no no no. That is his, that is his as well. I and, thought and that there was construction going on at uh, at our member's house. I thought it was the construction companies. I was no. just there. Well, we just gave her a turkey right before before uh, Thanksgiving, and I said you can't even see us. That's the first time I saw that. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a white trunk and it's yeah. filled with garbage inside. It's so dirty you can't yes. really see the outside of it is in, around garbage. So that's okay. why the rats are always there. So this is not the yard is like that too, Miss Rojas. The yard, which is connected to the schoolyard, yeah. is like that. It's nothing but garbage in his yard. Mm -hmm. I'll find. I, I will. Think he's a hoarder make the phone call. because he is nothing but garbage in his yard and all around his house which is right in the middle of the yard for the school. For the kids, yeah. He used to store his boats there, and I think he moved to Florida. That's mm -hmm. what I'm understanding. So I- um, no, The gentleman is there. I saw, he, there's people living there. His, mm -hmm. He has a daughter, two grandkids. 
Um, well, no, not the house. There. There's a there's a property right next to the house that is just storage. No, the house itself, because I see them like they they play music in the house. So um, I see the kids because I have to be to work for seven. So I get in my building around 630, 640 and I see them there. They're literally there and he goes and collects more trash and he brings it to <laughs> to the to the house. It sounds like he's a hoarder. Um, Charlene, would you be open to you and I meeting together and to oh, go? Oh, definitely. Because, you know, this is something I, I can't, I cannot. I cannot imagine that our kids even have to like see that or have a fear. I hope they haven't seen a rat and, you know, for little children, they, That's scary. they're not rational or logical. So they have a lot of fears and fantasies and that should never be associated with a child's school. Charlie, yeah. could you put your contact information in the exactly. chat for everybody, please? Yeah, and then we can coordinate with yeah. Principal Rojas as soon as possible. Because be I don't live no. far from, from you guys. I don't live far from yeah. Golden Corral. And I yeah. think the school is not is right. Oh, you're right there. Yeah, I don't okay. live far. I can walk there. Okay. okay. Well, so if I went there before I went into my office um, just to go and see during the daytime. Um, Sorry. If you could put your email address, Charlene. Yeah, I know. I just I accidentally hit enter and I didn't mean to. So we'll figure it. something out and just do a walkthrough, Bernadette, yeah. and then we take have to and, get, you know, um, draft some dialogue together. In writing out to Correct. Work. And once we're in agreement with the language, yeah. you know, we could do it in Google Documents out of the book, Google Documents. We're in agreement with the language and then we could set something out. But yeah. I'll also we'll alert superintendent as well about this matter. Uh, okay. Yes, uh, who, whoever the whoever the the people of influence that uh, needs to know about this is very important because no school should be have to dealing with this. Um, and if the property mm -hmm. owners are having an issue, uh, then get Department of Building involved with it. If there's a sanitation issue, we'll get sanitation involved with it, and we'll get whatever other city agencies need to get involved with it. And uh, it's something also with the borough president's office. That we could do, uh, I will, I will speak with, uh, Jeremy and I will just bounce ideas off of him and just see if this. He could either add to it and uh, we could all take to it and as a group effort. We can make sure that yeah. there's uh, we could rattle some cages. With this and also definitely, I just think parents need to be empowered. You know, I'm sure that if parents, um understood that listen there is help and there's a way if you have this concern even if i write a memorandum and parents write their own letters and you have right. a list of all of your officials that are have response this issue i guarantee if we do that and your individual parents start writing letters you are going to get some action. You're going to get someone to attend to this issue. And, you, you know, that's a number one goal um, for the Van Ness Neighborhood Alliance is really, really engaging the community and empowering um, individuals that live within our community to make sure they're active and involved. And if there's a problem or an issue, then we come together. But our children, we just cannot fail them in that way. We, we can't. Yep, I agree. I agree. Uh, and as, as a group effort with the, the committee members here with the um, edu uh, education, culture and youth services, uh, they could also, we could also put forth a letter from the committee and, uh, have it come through the community board, which also will be another plus to sum up the yeah. issues. And when it comes to that, where I know that, uh, it will make a difference. Uh, also, can I interrupt? Um, it's Farah from the councilman's yes, office. Farrah. Please send also our office. This is what we do all the time. We work with the city agencies on these issues. Um, Department of Health, Sanitation, they, we, I always work with them as a team. They, they work together to see what the health issues are, have sanitation, clean it up.
But if you already have any pictures or any 311 complaint numbers, please send those to me because I reach out immediately to those agencies to act immediately on those issues as well. So on top of everything you. else. I could yeah. get you those. I could get you those pictures. Um, yeah, that would be great, and I can re reach out immediately on that. And Farah, I wanted to um, say to you that in the past, Councilman Joe and I has been very responsive regarding these types of issues. So I know that he will be leaving soon. But will you be continuing? Do you think? Um. I don't know yet. I am looking. Oh. So hopefully <laughs> in some capacity. Yes, I love working with the community. Um, I've worked all over the Bronx, so I am currently looking and hope to see you all again and work with okay. you all. Excellent. Yes. Yes, I will get you, I will get you those pictures like immediately. Uh, okay. I, you know, I'm, I'm only a block away. So, yeah, just send them to me and I'll reach out immediately. Okay. No problem. And um, if I will, if I could find the phone number of the person I think is still the property owner, I'll also look on DOB, etc. Um, I'll give you that information too. Yep. So Farrah, when we put this um package together, when we do the letter and we draft everything, just to make sure we're all on the same page, we're gonna all copy all the all the email addresses that we put in the chat, right? Mm-hmm. So that we're mm -hmm. all in alliance on this matter. Yes. Okay. okay. I took down Joanne. I don't know if I saw your email address there. Maybe you put it in the chat earlier. I could send it. I could. I could also send it to you, Charlene. I I see it now. Yeah. I. But I also um. It's in it. It's in Joanne. It's in your signature too, Joanne. Okay. Uh, in a letter. Okay. In the letter that. Okay. Yes. Okay, so um, I, I just want to, I want us all to work together and, and also just to have a plan that we don't overlap and duplicate. So, um, Amy will definitely, whatever gets sent out, we need to let everybody who is on this, uh, in this, in this meeting, be a part of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just to, to keep up on it because um, we need to have some resolve with the, uh, I'm in only. agreement, Bernadette, for sure. I, I mean, I think the only thing I'm thinking is, like I said, from this one, what I do at my job, I rather I'm going to do the Google Doc to start it. Like if we all put in our two cents in the doc and draft it together. It's a collective thing, so that all the key things are put in certain terminology, you know, um, certain tone of voice. So got to keep it professional. But then, of course, we got to put all our snapshots in there as well. But they need to understand we're really serious. So mm -hmm. it's definitely there's no silos. Like you said, we're going to partner in this together. So okay. I just wanted to make sure I'm I'm keeping track of all the email addresses, but I think you're able to download the chat as well on your WebEx, similar to maybe like Zoom, just to yes. make sure everything is accurate. And then everyone will get access to that Google Doc to chime in and put their suggested edits. Yes, and I, I also always copy and paste with the chat just in case it doesn't get to me. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which has happened in the past, and I'm like, well, where's my chat? Well, sorry, something yeah, happened. I'm like, no, yeah, as we I speak, hate that. I don't lose it either. So, so. If I might, uh, Bernadette, can I uh, say something? You sure can. Thank you. Uh, it's nice to see a PA president like Ms. Carpenter. That's the way we used to be in the past, demanding and working for our children. Uh, but I believe there is. It does the school receive title 1 funding because that's where the money used to go for after school programs for the children and other things for the children. However, with mayoral control, and I see this is a very small school. So that's a problem too. the size of the school. So there is not enough money to go around. That's where the larger schools have the advantage that yeah. they can, you know, put the money there and it'll go further than a smaller yeah. school. Uh, the other thing about the air conditioning that can be asked of the state assembly and the state senators who have put air conditioners in schools elsewhere in, this, in the Bronx in the past. So, also, Bernadette, you may want to put that uh, on your uh, budget priority list, either the air conditioners or the after school program money. As far as, uh, you know, because that's a budget issue. That's not a capital issue. And the last thing I have to say. Being a least issue, a least space though, the board, the Department of Education will not spend money to upgrade it because that's 
the archdiocese's property, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Yes, they're still the owners. Uh, right. They want the owner to do any uh, upgrades. The board, you know, the city won't. And that's all I have to say right now. Thank you. Okay. Um, the one thing that I do know from the past that there was in, in uh, uh, Principal Rojas, you can you can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, that the agreement between the archdiocese and the Department of Education was that they were responsible for the outer part of the school, and the Department of Education is responsible for the 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 school building and the inside of the school. Am I correct? Um, well, I know our custodian who is hired from the Department of Education now before they were um, from a private company, they they do maintain the outside of the building and the inside of the building. But I think that if any structural um, damages or any changes, they would still have to go through the archdiocese because it is still his building. Um, he, he does still come to the school and say hi, pop, pop up when he's, he's nearby or in town because I know he does travel. So they, he's still responsible for, for the building. So um, I think it was Robert that spoke. So he's absolutely correct in, in what he stated in terms of um, the DOE is not going to pay for something um, like, like that. Okay. Okay. All right. We're all learning. <laughs> so um, can I ask Amy a question? Um, sure. So Amy, when do you think you will have the first draft of whatever we're, when do you think we can? I mean, I can create the Google doc tonight and we can start adding our own content right away. Okay. Um, I, I did what you said, Bernard, did I copy and paste the whole chat so I could capture everyone's email addresses? Just just in case. <laughs> yeah, and I could just do a Word document and we just start plugging in together. Okay. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Sounds good. But I think the walkthrough is really important for me because, again, this is new for me and I'm big on facts and I right. got to see it to be able to articulate correctly. Yeah. Um, so so mm -hmm. maybe we can wait and, um, but I know this is urgent. So may, maybe we can wait until you have a walkthrough at least so you can see it well i'm willing to collaborate with you and we can go together okay i that is no problem um i don't know joanne it sounds like are you working like do you have a strict work schedule but we can then i guess all communicate with each other yeah we could talk offline like i work physically okay. in my office wednesdays and fridays in the city so I'm okay. going to tomorrow. So, for example, I just looked at my calendar to see if you guys wanted to come, wanted me to come through tomorrow, Principal uh, Rojas. I actually could um, in the morning because my meetings don't kick off until um, over eleven o'clock. So, if I needed to shoot over, I could after I dropped my daughter off to school at MS one ninety four. Yes, definitely. Um, I'm there six six thirty, six forty in the morning. Um, I know Miss Carpenter drops off her daughter um, for in time for her breakfast, so because she has to rush to work. Um, so I am there. Just let me know. Um, whatever time works for you guys. Okay. I'll All right. Available. I can meet um, between seven thirty and eight, but the only thing is that at eight I have to. Drop my yeah. off yeah. for breakfast well, and go. It shouldn't take long, I don't think, right? Like yeah. if we're all no. yeah, we're doing a quick definitely, mm -hmm. It definitely would not take it definitely would not take long. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll I'll be there at 7 30. All right. If you want me there at 7 30, I'll be there at 7 30 yeah. then. Okay. <laughs> I have an early call. I have to be downtown. <laughs> no, I'm willing, I'm willing, because this is yeah. serious. I mean, it really disheartens. A lot yeah. just to hear that. And again, I'm a bronze person born and raised, y'all. Like this is my home. So for me to even hear rats around children, that's yeah. like you said, that's unacceptable. Yeah. And we're not in a low income neighborhood. You know, we're in a middle, I'd say middle class, right? Working citizens is all in this neighborhood. So well, this working, working, working middle class. Working middle class, yes. But what my mom lives in Hunts Point, y'all. So there's a big difference of where my mom is in Hunts Point, Southern Boulevard, and over here. So this right. is an expectation that I have, and I've always lived, and I'm born in the North Bronx. So mm -hmm. just like I said, I'm shocked to even hear that the kids are going through that, and it hasn't been a conversation. 
but we do need to make this a real serious conversation because they talk about so many other things. School safety is number one right now because all the, 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 the crime that's going up, the crime rate, mm -hmm. the homeless has already increased. That's another concern for me. And Brenda and I talked about that. The homelessness has increased. And I'm noticing by the train stations, everyone, that a lot of the homeless, especially at Westchester Square, they're loitering quite a bit. So when mm -hmm. the kids are commuting to school, they have to bypass these really aggressive homeless individuals. Even on my way home from work, I had one follow me almost to my home. Um, mm -hmm. and I had to call the 45th precinct. And then I obviously, and I wrote, I wrote um, a couple of folks, a couple of council members as well, because I am you know, deeply concerned. The one thing I've never seen so far is the rat infestation. So that's new for me, but we, need, we do need to address that right away. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so bad, Amy, that the parents have to walk, well, I walk in the morning shaking my keys so that oh. they can run when they hear it. Gosh. Wow. Yeah, I shake my keys in the morning as I walk with my daughter to drop mm. her off from school and they all scatter and run. It's really scary. Oh, and when no. it rats no. you, that's that's not good. So yeah, we gotta we have to fix that. We gotta yeah, address and that. The, and the, even the, the staff members went because we park in the back. That's where we park. And the staff members they go out in pairs because of that. Um and I leave the building. I'm the last one to leave the building. And I'm telling you, I'm afraid every night because I don't leave my building oh. till after six. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, we're well, also going to be, um, I'm going to speak to also um, Nathalia Fernandez, which is our state assembly member and um, get, get her involved also in this situation. So she is, she's, uh, she she will be informed and hopefully be on this. She I thought that she might have been. I know that she was invited this evening. Um, I didn't know if maybe one of her reps were going to be here also. So I was hoping that she would be here also. But um, once we put together this letter, this letter with regards to this, then uh, um, she's you know she will she will be on board. So okay. just get all the necessary people. And in fact, what we can do tomorrow, and Christy and everyone, that once we do our walkthrough, we can mm -hmm. dump the pictures in the Google Docs, so you'll see it right away. Oh, okay. there you go. If yep. you might, we'll have to send it separately to me to my council email, um, if you don't mind. Um, and also, I just want to stress this is a city issue, so the council is the most effective as far as this yes. specific mm -hmm. issue. Uh, we do always work with Natalia's office, but we always separate between state issues and city issues. Yes, yes, you're absolutely right. Yeah, and just to um, point out to make sure everyone is aware, like um, Joanne, I don't know if Phil Fillmore is actually Waldo Feliz or Mark Joni, but we have to send everything to both. Um, it's, it's, Os it's Oswald. It's, it's Felice. Yeah. So we have to communicate with Mark Joni and um, Oswald. Oswald. Yeah, but this, but the school, but the school is in. So. Yeah, but but the parents of children that attend that school are both in Joni's district and also in Felice's district. So he must be aware. And he must do the work that he has to do for his constituents, which include both the parents and the children. Okay. Okay. So we'll definitely, uh, definitely have that. And uh, we will also uh, we'll make sure all the necessary people are involved with this because uh, it just has to be, it has to be resolved. Yeah. It has to be resolved. It, you know, it's okay. gone on long. It's gone on long enough. I mean, I wasn't a, where last summer I was just became aware of it just by hearing a comment. Mm -hmm. And like I said, just seeing that that truck, I just saw it when we dropped off the turkey to Chickie, well, our member on mm -hmm. Hunt Avenue. I, I was I said, what the heck is this? I said, how is this truck even you can't see out of the front thing? It was beer cans and uh, wow. garbage. It was horrible. I said, what is this? It was the that's, first time I saw that. It's just an eyesore, and that's outrageous that it's um, next to a school. And you yes. know that if that were on my block, I would be having a conniption fit. Mm -hmm. So 
There's okay. no way that that can exist next to a school. It just cannot continue. I mean, yeah. I know how scary it is for me when I see a rat. And that's one rat. I mean, I literally, knowing like a, we have Van Buren, where there's that one apartment building where they don't care for their garbage well. And that's some place where you'll see a rat jump from the garbage. When I walk home at night, like I'm going to go home tonight, I will always cross the street. I would never go on that side. <laughs> that's yeah. scary it is. So, well, know, that our children, we just can't. Well, I'll tell you that happens when you're walking to the train station in Manhattan and when you're walking in Manhattan, yes. you don't walk down the street when it's garbage night. Yes, you just make exactly. sure you're across the street. <laughs> I've had to jump over so many rats. I'm just like, oh, yeah. So, yeah, it's it's terrible. It's really bad. But around children that, uh, yeah. that just can't yeah. fly. I'm sorry. Quick question. Uh, Mark is in charge of community board 11. No. The well, community board 11 is in charge of community board 11. It's part of the borough. Pre All of the community boards are part of the borough presence office. And in, there are 12 community boards in the Bronx and in most of the boroughs. Uh, I might be off by 1 or 2, but all of the community boards are, um, are through the borough president's office. Uh, uh, council member Joan is the city council member. So he deals with all of the city agencies, uh, et cetera. Nathalia Fernandez is a state assembly member and um, they deal with the, each has their own jurisdiction. So, yeah. so hang, out, hang out with us, Joanne and Vanish. You'll, you'll learn really fast. <laughs> no, because I originally sent my email to um, reader John Dudley and, Re and Etta Reader of Community Board 3 because that's what the superintendent's um, assistant told me to reach out to community oh, board three and they told me they don't deal with that, that the school, anything related to that school goes to community board 11. And that's how I ended up reaching out to you yeah. because, we're yes, dead. because it's community board 11 has its boundaries. And if you go on to Bronx community board 11, you can see the boundary map and each city council person has their boundary map. Same any kind of. Uh, city council, state assembly, uh, borough president, there's always a, a map with boundaries and jurisdictions. So that, uh, unfortunately, like in Van Est, we're cut, we're cut in the, in the middle. And actually, where I live, which is right around the corner from you, is the beginning of council district 15. And at Unionport brings it up to and everything going up to Bronxdale and to other areas of the Bronx is community board is a uh, council district 13. So right. two city so Mark Joni is the city council person for 13. Yes. Yes. And the Elise is for 15. And we both and, in the Van Ness community. Yes, but the actual the 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 park, the war memorial, the school and uh, half of Van Ness and the dead end streets to the right are in council council member Joan I's, uh district and along. I mean, it's a large district. It's just that's our part of the area. Um, and then the other parts of the area, are councilman, uh, council Feliz. member. The district. president's streets are are Feliz. Yes, for the most and it, I always tell people go on, go on to their place and just. Just look at the look at the district map and get up and close so you can see the streets. You just become informed uh, about who you know who uh, has a jurisdiction and where where the boundaries are. Uh, and hopefully, after our testimonies that we gave at the um, the independent redistricting commission, uh, uh, one was in July July twenty sixth, the other was November 9th, where the proposed lines will include all of Van Ness, et cetera, and we will no longer have this issue. So we won't know that until probably the end of January, um, when I think that uh, the final, I think the final decisions will be made and then the community will be able to respond. Maybe, maybe not, but, uh, you know, we are already given our maps and our requests, et cetera. So um, there would just be, one city council, city council member, one state assembly member. So we will, we will see how that works out. But um, 
right now the school is in uh, council member districts 13, which is councilman Joe and I. And unfortunately, as of December 31st, uh, we will, we were going to, we're going to miss Mark. We're going to miss Farah. <laughs> um, maybe, maybe Farah will continue Bernadette. I, I hope so. I hope somebody scoops you up Farah. All right. Yes. Let's hope. <laughs> oh, I, I hope you're, I hope you're making phone calls to the appropriate people, which I'm sure That's you are. Starting. I, Mark keeps uh, the councilman keeps us very busy. So hey, you've <laughs> got to do that. So yeah. I mean, you know, the council, the council person elect, yeah, starts. You you need to get a hold of her. They they start on January first, so or second, I should say. Um, hey, I see I, that I do have to leave, um, but I I'll definitely react as soon as I receive everything. And yeah, I'm actually we typed it up, guys, real quick. I'm sending it right now to test that all you guys can see it. I just want to confirm the T. Fiella email address. Everyone, was I supposed to add that in Monica Major? I'm sorry. There was an email address, um, T. Fiella at nidcny.org. That That's my associate director. Yeah, yeah, she usually comes up with a lot of good resources. You might want to just plug her in there. Okay, so I have everybody. I just wanted to double any spot mm -hmm. check to make sure I have everybody. I have Monica, I have Colson, I have you, Bernadette, I have you, Miss Jackson, Rojas, Ruben, and I have you, Joanne. So I'm setting the Google Doc now. Um, and then that way we can, um, you should hopefully see it in your emails when you do have access to it to let me know you got it. Okay. You have my email address as well. So let me know. Uh, I, I will, I will, uh, Amy, I will include the other, the other uh, members. Mm -hmm. Phyllis Nassasio and uh, Natalie uh, Medina, uh, and also um, and to to basically be a be a part of this too, since they are committee members. Okay, that's totally fine. I'm just here to assist and serve. So, <laughs> like I said, even if I have to edit, you know, my degrees in writing. So if I have to edit the language, that's you know, that's fine. But I'm definitely, okay. um, Charlene, going to meet with you at 7.30 in the morning. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and and Principal Rojas. Yeah, so when yeah. I get there, um, I have I think I left my cell in the chat just to make sure I'm not yes. lost. <laughs> yeah, you did. I took the number down. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, so we should be able to connect. But I'll be in front of the building, 7.30. Okay. okay. And okay. I'm vaccinated, so I can come inside the building if I need to. Yes, I was, we can. I'm there from 640 and no need to buy coffee. I created a coffee bar for the teachers to relax, relate, and release. So coffee's oh. Okay. Oh. <laughs> wow. Bless you. Bless That's you. Awesome. Just, just to relieve their stress during this pandemic is the most I can do for the hard work they do. So coffee's <laughs> on me tomorrow. Coffee's on me tomorrow. <laughs> oh, that's so, fantastic. Since I left my con contigo travel mug. Uh, I'm down today. <laughs> uh, I I I'd like to open up the floor and make sure that our committee members have not uh, that I know that everybody's been listening. But is there anything that you would like to contribute or to finish off or to add to this, either Phyllis or Nat Natalie? No, I really don't. Um, I mean, I'm a Catholic school teacher, so we get we don't get funding from anybody. Uh, I know. <laughs> yeah, so the talk of air conditioning, that's like a dream for us. Uh, that will never happen. So I'm just, I've been listening and taking it all in. Okay. All right. Thank you, Phyllis. Uh, and uh, Natalie, did you have any, um, any input or any questions that you would like to before we uh, close the meeting? Uh, no, I don't have anything else to add at this time. Okay. Um, Bernadette, I wanted to invite everyone to our um, holiday holiday dinner, right? For the Venice Neighborhood Alliance, we have really good food. Yes, catered by fine food cuisine, and that's going to be December thirteenth, right, Bernadette, at seven p.m. Yes, that's a Monday at the Monsignor Fiorentino. Um, apartments, which 1830 Amethyst? 80, 1830. Um, Amethyst uh, Street. Yes. And if anybody, uh, we are, if anybody's on Facebook, uh, all the information is there. If anybody's in next door, 
uh, I put the information on there also. Uh, and um, I know I had sent it to, to Principal Rojas also. Mm -hmm. And please make sure that any of the parents uh, and Joanne, any of the parents that uh, I'll send you, I'll send. Did I send you the flyer, Joanne? Oh, okay, okay. I thought I did. I, I'll send you both the flyers, and please uh, feel free to anybody. It's open for anybody. Yeah. To come. Thank you so much. Thank oh, you. Thank you. Okay. Um. Right now, it's good timing. Uh. I think as far as the agenda goes, we the old business. Uh, we will pick up the youth leadership awards in our January meeting. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I just, I urge the committees many members to look to read through them and then we can have further discussion at our next meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, I know there'll be a lot of questions, et cetera. And it always is, uh, 1 of the things just to remember that if that particular nominee comes from, uh, your organization, you are not allowed to vote. So just keep that in mind. Um, Bernadette, I didn't receive uh, anything about that. I sent you a zip file of all the nominees. No, the, I didn't get the, it. I'll, I'll re I'll resend it. I'll resend okay, it. thank you. Yes, uh, and um, just as what a zip file, I'm sure everybody's where you just double click and it expands. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay, um, I'd like to say that our meeting is now ended, it is, is going to adjourn. And if I get a yes from everybody else to adjourn, who wants to second me? I second. Thank you. And uh, it is now 8.55. And I will say that this meeting is adjourned. And I want to thank everybody who participated this evening. And I want to wish everybody uh, a Merry Christmas, a Happy Hanukkah, a Happy Kwanzaa, a Happy Holiday, and a joyful, joyful season. So I just want to thank you. Thank you, everyone. And have a nice one. Happy Holidays and good night, everyone. Yes, okay. good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Okay, good night. Okay. Oh, I'm going to need the meter.